Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today we're looking at charging a refrigerant system. Uh, it's a cap tube system, so there's no TXV or piston or orifice. It's actually capillary tubes in the evaporator coil. Uh, right now, we're low on refrigerant. We're at about 40 psig. It's R22, and we are at about 16 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. Though our superheat is still very high, uh, we have a temperature of 63.5 on the vapor line and 16 degrees. So uh, we're talking about, uh, was that, 40, uh, 46 or something like that, uh, 46 degrees, 47 degrees, something like that, um, of superheat, all right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of refrigerant and see if we can go ahead and get the pressure, the vapor pressure up, up above freezing over here, okay? All right, we just raised the pressure up at like one or two degrees saturated. All right, so we're gonna try it again. We're going through a liquid vaporizer. Um, if you can see that, that's what's keeping our system safe. All right, we raised the pressure up a little bit. We're one PSI higher than we were before. I did zero the scale out before I started weighing. I purged the air out of the lines in the uh, refrigerant hoses. Um, just so you know, this scale set up, I got to press in on it a little bit, but we're weighing it in as vapor, so it's only a little bit going in at a time. I did notice that um, the evaporator coil has some some dust on it and stuff like that. It's not completely covered, um, but uh, that's going to need a little bit of a cleaning as well. Right now, I just want to get the charge up. A little bit but uh, if that if it really is completely covered it's going to actually affect the amount of airflow going across that evaporator coil and, and you'd be out of luck trying to charge it then basically you're going to charge it nothing's going to happen now just so you know just just say i wanted to get it up to at least 55 psig I can't just open the vapor line at 55 PSIG and kind of like let it sit and go and do other things, all right? Uh, you know, what's going to happen is you can actually accidentally overcharge it. Even though, you know, your thought process says, hey, I might be able to just keep it right there, you know? Um, but in actuality, you're going to end up overcharging it accidentally. It's not going to be good. We're up at about 20 degrees saturated right now. So if you follow this ring, uh, the outside pressure ring into the inside green ring, we're at 20 degrees. We're about 43 PSIG right now. And we're at 20, 20 to 21 degrees uh, saturated. So we are decreasing the superheat, uh, which is good. This is a very old system. A lot of times you, uh, you'll you see the uh, pistons and, and uh, orifices, but uh, you don't see that many capillary tube evaporator coils hanging around that much anymore. It's not that common. Usually they've been changed out for something more efficient. Over time, maybe they had leaks or whatever, you know. Now, I could charge this in liquid with that liquid vaporizer. I am charging it in vapor anyway, so I really don't need uh, the, the vaporizer on there. But it's on there just, in, just, just because. I usually just leave that on when I'm attaching my gauge sets a lot of times. All right, we're at 22 degrees saturated, and we are at uh, 63 degrees still. Um, so at least we're lessening. We're at 41, 41 uh, degrees superheat right now. If we let it sit for a little bit, you know, this would end up going down. But we need to get some refrigerant in there. Um, we really need to get some refrigerant in there just to make sure that that EVAP does not freeze on us completely.
I wanted to put more in, I could put it, I could turn this bottle upside down, put it in liquid, but I'm just sticking with vapor right now. Taking it very gingerly. It says we weighed about two ounces in so far, if you can see that. The scale's, uh, scale's pretty old. From the factory, this outdoor condenser, it's only a ton and a half unit with 5 8 ACR suction line. It uh, has 2.94 pounds from the factory. So when you talk about five or six ounces, it becomes a big, big deal. A very big deal, especially uh, capillary tubes and piston orifice systems. They have to be charged very critically uh, with a superheat. You, you can't charge them with subcooling. And the TX, there's no TXV to try to help the evaporator coil uh, have that 14 degrees of superheat that that wants. So this charge has to be charged real critically with the wet bulb on the inside of the house and the dry bulb on the outside near the condenser coil, um, but not not close enough to where it would pick up any heat. That was my multimeter beeping, telling me it's about to shut down. All right, we're at about 50 PSIG on the vapor side. 26, 20, about 26 degrees saturated in the middle of the evaporator coil. We already know we need to get it up above freezing in the evaporator coil, so it should be at least, you know, 58 PSIG. Weight so far, 4.8 ounces. All right, we're at about 27, we'll call it, 27 degrees in the evaporator coil. So we're at 34 degrees of superheat. All right, so at present, we've put in 12.2 um, ounces. Our vapor pressure is right at, right below 60, about 59 and a half. Our saturated R22 temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil is 33 degrees. Here it says 56.5, so uh, we're getting closer, um, about 20, 22, 23 degrees or so, 23 degrees of superheat. So we're going to continue adding, see if we can bring this vapor pressure up and get this temperature down. All right, so presently we have 13.4 ounces of R22 added to the system. We have a vapor uh, pressure of 60. We have a temperature of 33 degrees. The inside of the house is now down pretty cold. It's down to 63 degrees inside the house. All right. Um, we have our temperature over here is about 40, 49 or so. Um, so our superheat has now entered the range of about 16, 15 or 16, because this is dropping. Uh, as we go. All right. Yeah, it's getting a little cold in the house now. Um, it's a smaller home. We've had the system running for a while, charging it. So we know that the vapor pressure is going to stay on the lower side. All right. We know it's not going to be up at 65 or 670 and stuff like that. We know it's going to be in the low 60s just because of the temperature in the house right now and the temperature outside. Uh, just due to the liquid line um, being able to be cooler and then going in and doing its phase change to the evaporator coil. All right. We'll give it a little bit more time. All right, presently we have 14 ounces in there. Uh, and we see we have about 33 degrees saturated. We're at about 59 and a half still. Uh, as far as the pressure, about 60 PSI at 33 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. 
Um, we have about 49 degrees of superheat and basically we stopped moving, all right? We're no longer um, dropping in temperature as far as superheat goes. I think we're, we're at about the max of that evaporator coil that's inside um, the smaller evaporator coil. It's a real old one, like we said, it's a capillary style with a metering device and a small evaporator coil. Um, but we're at about 48 and a half here, 49. And inside the house, though, we, we're now down at 62 degrees, which is pretty cold inside that house as far as charging. And that's why our vapor pressure is so low, and we do have uh, roughly accurate accurate charge. We're going to end up confirming that inside the house. We're going to take a temperature reading at 18 to 21 degrees between the return and supply registers. All right. All right. Inside the house, we have 60 one degrees to 62 degrees, right around 61 and a half, okay? That's at the return grill, all right? Now we're gonna move and go over to the supply register. All right, now we have 43 degrees roughly. All right, so we do have about 18 degree temp difference. All right. So we do know that uh, our charge is correct. We do have over 18 degrees of temperature difference. We know we have superheat just to keep the compressor safe. Uh, so this is the way that you would use to just confirm that you do have an accurate charge, especially once the house gets that down that low in temperature, down to like 62 degrees or 61 and a half like we have it here. Um, this is a way just to confirm uh, your your refrigerant system is working properly, especially since um, there's no humidity in the house now, or there's not much. Your wet bulb reading is very low, so you should be able to uh, attain an 18 to 21 degree temp difference. That's the only time you shouldn't be able to get an 18 to 21 in a, in a um, residential dwelling or, or uh, you know, like some light commercial stuff. Uh, the only time that you should not get an 18 to 21 is when it's really humid and the, and the evaporator is battling that humidity. But we confirmed that our charge is correct. All right, hope you enjoy yourself. See you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.